with me in Romans. Brother Doug, we've been in Romans for a while. Well, it has been a little while, hasn't it? But I think there's much to be gleaned from this book. Uh, well, I'm not really even doing it justice. Um, I would hope that God's people would take the time during the week to spend some time after what's been gone through in Sunday school and in the church service. I think God will bless you for it. We certainly don't, like I say, cover hardly uh, a fraction of what's probably in the chapter we're in right now. But uh, if you'll find your place in Romans chapter 8, if uh, please, Romans chapter 8. I'm going to be reading from uh, verse 28 and following. If you'd like to follow along, if you don't have a Bible, why not follow along or be good listeners? We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them he also called. In whom he called, them he also justified. In whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Father, thank you for your word this morning, for the time you've given us to look into it. May we be good listeners. May you, Father, encourage hearts this morning, challenge hearts. May you remind us, Lord, uh, what we have in thee. May we not take it for granted. May we have thankful hearts. May Christ have the chief seat. May, uh, Lord, you do the teaching. And may you receive the honor and glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. What shall we then say to these things, folks? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now there's much you could put underneath this, but I'm going to go on for now. I'm going to go right on to verse 32. He that, if, you want, if God be for us, let's look at some of the things that God has done for us and continues to do for us today. He spared not his own son in verse 32, but delivered him up for us all. I forget this sometimes. I've been saved since the early 80s. And uh, I take, uh, I'll have to confess, I take my salvation for granted. Um, folks, you're saved here this morning. Stop and consider this morning what you have in Christ. Uh, really, stop and give thanks and appreciate and be thankful for perhaps the one that God uh, moved in their heart and life to share the gospel with you. But uh, God has done much for us and continues to do much for us. If you look with me in Romans chapter 5, why back up to Romans 5. Kind of a, just kind of a way of, by way of reminder, he, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Romans 5, reading in verse 6, it says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. And my name's right there in parentheses after that. Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now hmm, justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. He that spared not his own son, but that delivered him up for us all. I like how it goes on to, in verse 32 of Romans 8, if you hold your place there. How shall he not with them also freely give us all things? I was thinking of that a little bit in uh, thoughts this morning, even on the way to church. Look with me in 1 Peter, if you would please, chapter 1. Amen. I used to think real life was in a good military novel or a good military book. <laughs> I have to admit, as a young kid, I had a thing for the military. 
I like to wear my, my dad's sailor outfits. I'd like to read the military uh, books. I'd like to look at uh, my, my father's slides of his experience in the military. I had a thing for the military. I used to think a lot about that, a lot about history also. But I found as a young, as a young man out of high school, um, I was introduced to something else uh, by my brother David. Amen. Who was in the military and did not go into the military saved, but was saved in Memphis or Millington at a serviceman center there, and he shared the gospel with me. And I began to realize, and uh, listen, I got saved, but listen, what, what the realization was that real life was not found in what I thought I had. It wasn't found in my education. It wasn't found in my mili love of military history. It wasn't found in love of even life, so to speak. Real life was found in Jesus Christ. Amen. If you look at me in 1 Peter chapter 1, and I ask you to follow along carefully, because folks, th there is a... A sense today, I think, and, and sometimes even Christianity has it, that real life, and we forget sometimes, is found in our material possessions. Real life is found in my job. Real life is found in, in other pursuits of passion. And I think that there's, uh, I need reminding of this sometimes, that no, Doug, real life is still in Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a, I like how it's put here, a lively hope Amen. by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God. I like that this is a lively hope. Amen. That Jesus Christ is alive today. Amen. That my hope isn't in myself. My hope is not in my education. My hope is not in even even my, however you want to look at it, my hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now how is it with you this morning? If you're saved this morning, you should know that, right? But folks, I need to be reminded sometimes. I get caught up in the hubbub and the, and the... Do you find yourself like that sometimes, folks? You just kind of get caught up in it out there. And it's like God has to pull the car over, so to speak, and have a conversation with you. Say, oh, 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 hold on. What is your real joy and hope in? Amen? Yes, thank me for the work. Praise God. Amen? Yes, thank me for keeping the car right. Yes, but your hope and your passion and your life ought to be in his son. Amen? You'll find if you look with me in, in John chapter 1, there's many, many, many scriptures in the book of John, but it keeps it a little bit simple this morning for the sake of time. If you look with me in John chapter 1, John chapter 1, if you would please. John 1.1, 1, 1, you know these scriptures. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. Amen. Amen. And the life was the light of men. How is it with you this morning, folks? Amen. I need some reminding of this. I struggled with these verses and Lord what would you have and back and forth and but look with me in John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I think of this, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Oh folks, what we have in Christ this morning, we have life, eternal life, amen. Hey, stop and think about life itself and how very short it is. Folks, come on now. Amen. I'm 53. Amen. Oh, come on. I, th I can think back when I was in my 20s. I can think back to when I was in my teens. But where did time go? Where did time go? I've been in this church for many years. You see young kids growing up and gone and married. And I look back and reflect and go, wow. Life on this side of glory is very short. It's very short. And God says, he, he says we're to redeem the time. Teach us to number our days. Amen? Amen. But you look at things and you thought, wow, so what does that do? As the window on this side starts to close, guess what starts to open? The window to eternity. Amen. You say this morning, you know you're going to heaven when you die? 
We're one heartbeat away, so to speak. Look in John chapter 10, it says in verse 25, verse, uh, I'm sorry, verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. You're still in John. Look with me in John chapter 11. John chapter 11. John chapter 11 and verse number 24, Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Folks, do you understand that, that <laughs> A, how short life is, and eternity is what it is. You see the demo. You see the illustration. You fill a room like this with pennies. Each 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 penny is a life. Each penny is a year. However you want to look at it, and toss your penny out into the pile of this room. It just becomes. It just disappears. We're speaking about eternal things here. If you're saved this morning, you're saved once. Amen. For eternity. Thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Real life is found in Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. Look with me, if you would, please, in John 14, the book of John 14. John 14, 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Huh? Real life is found in Jesus Christ. Stop and think about these verses in Romans about he spared not his own son, delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? I think of all things being real life found in Christ. Look with me if you're still in John chapter, chapter number 20. John chapter 20. Thomas missed out on church service here, but he caught up. Amen. John chapter 20, verse number 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Amen. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Amen. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but folks these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name in 1st John chapter 5 closing the thought here 1st John chapter 5 you saved this morning amen 1st John chapter 5 Verse 11, this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You saved this morning, folks? Appreciate what you have in Jesus Christ. I think of, of real life found in Christ, but here's another thought. Not only, and you could factor it God's amazing grace, for by grace are you saved through faith in that, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. Amen. But I think of God's enabling or serving grace. Look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. And verse number 9. For I am the least of the apostles. They have not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. 
And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. I think of God's saving grace, but folks, here's, a, here's another blessing, if you haven't thought about this. I think of God's enabling grace. I need God's grace to get through the week. I need God's grace at work. Amen? Can some of you relate to this? I need a special measure of God's grace at work. Amen? A double measure. I need God's grace in just driving out there today. I need God's grace in dealing with people. Amen? I need a special measure of God's grace. The beauty of, of being saved this morning is God has blessed us not only with salvation, but with a special measure of his divine grace to serve him and to get through each day. Look with me, if you would, please, also in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I have about you. I find myself trying to pull myself up by my bootstraps sometimes. I say, wait a minute. God's my very present help and strength. Amen. I, amen? Guys, we're kind of the worst at it, aren't we? Right? Come on. Yeah. God said, oh, look to me for help. Come to me for help and strength. Amen? amen. In, in 2 Corinthians 1, 12, I, can this, is this my testimony? Can this be your testimony? For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you. Word. Amen. You see what's going on here? Look with me, if you would please, also in, uh, in uh, you're still in 2 Corinthians, you know these verses, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I think of the blessings that God has given us and through his son. I think of his, his amazing grace. I think of his enabling grace. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, and necessities, and persecutions, and distresses, for Christ's sake. Amen. For when I am weak, wow, then am I strong. Amen. Yeah, it's, it's directly opposite to the world's philosophy. Amen? Yeah. In Ephesians, if you go to Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, you can say many things about the Apostle Paul, but I think there's, there's one thing very clear as you study his life, is he had a very clear understanding of where the power and the strength came from. Amen. Amen. Paul had a very clear understanding of his salvation, but he also had a very clear understanding of, hey, wait a minute, it's God who's really working in and through me. Amen? Stop and think about that this week, folks, as you're challenged out there in, in the daily activities of life. Are you trying to do the work yourself, or are you kind of, are you looking to God for his strength and help in getting through the day? Amen. Try it. Think about it. Pray about it. Look what he says here in, in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7. Whereof I was made a minister, how? According to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given. Why? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Every one of us has given, has been given a, a, a special measure of God's grace for, for a purpose. Amen. We, we looked a little bit into that last week. I'm about out of time this morning. But folks, look to Christ for your help. Amen. Amen. The job I mentioned last week that God has blessed many of us with, listen, that's not, I don't believe by accident. God's placed you there for a purpose. Amen. Amen. We're to be salt and light. We're to be ambassadors. 
for him. But listen, in that, in that working of the job or wherever God's placed you, look to God for his help in the area of his grace, his enabling grace. God will bless you for it. In closing here, and I'm kind of out of time here, but in closing, look with me in, a, in Hebrews chapter 4. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4. You get frustrated ever? Anybody here ever get frustrated? All right, fine. Amen. <laughs> Do you know sometimes God allows things? No, Brother Doug, you're, no, sometimes I believe God allows things. Amen. Eh, some of us, were, pride can be an issue, a rebellious spirit sometimes, bad attitude. Uh, I'm not going to be told anything, I'm not going to be told how to do it. But sometimes I believe God allows things into our life. Hey, remember me? Re remember me? Uh, you say, you say, remember? I haven't heard from you for a while. Amen. <sighs> Hebrews chapter 4, and verse 14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Folks, it's the best help you can get. Amen. Listen, life gets very serious sometimes. Does it not? It gets very serious. And I'm a firm believer that, that, that God is, if you're saved, he's never left us nor forsaken us. But God will remind us sometimes through different circumstances, hey, I'm still here. I haven't gone, I, it's not me, it's not me that's moved. Amen. Often it's God's children. And we need reminding. Listen, talk about a source of strength and help. Amen. That's the best source there is. How is it with you this morning? I think of God's blessings. I think he spared down his own son for us. Uh, he's freely given us all things. God's not in this brings for our misery, but God wants us to have life and that more abundantly through his son. We're out of time this morning. We're going to come back next week. And I think of God's divine supplies. You could look at the book of Psalm 34 and Psalm 103. But then I also think as we go on in the reading, and I'll challenge you this, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Now think about that. Amen. There's some key verses, I think, that will help you better understand that. I struggle with some of this sometimes on how to explain it. I think the best explainer, if that's a good way of putting it, is the Word of God, about the Word of God. So let's stand. We'll be dismissed with a word of prayer. I trust the Scripture has been a blessing to you. If you're saved this morning, well, at least act like it. Amen? Yes. Yes, this shouldn't be drudgery. You should be happy to be around God's people. Amen. You should be happy around the Bible lesson, Bible preaching. If you're not, maybe there's a heart problem. Amen. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Father, for your amazing grace. Thank you for your son. We pray, Lord, that your hand might be upon each one here this morning, that your Holy Spirit might speak to hearts, that you might use our pastor and the word of God uh, according to your perfect will this morning. Thank you for this time, Lord. May we redeem it this morning. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you to know and do his will today. God bless you each for being here.